from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. Uh, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, it's time for the podcaster who believes in false starts uh, and then starting again. But he's not sure exactly what he means, but he was thinking about it because then false start makes me think of another start word that starts with an F. And, oh boy, is that a tangent I could go on soon. What what am I talking about? Where am I going? Well, it's a time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Uh, hey, everybody, Sleep With Me is here to, to treat you with empathy and compassion, to create a port in a storm, a safe place, a port, you know, just a port in general. You say, no, nah, it's not really stormy out there. I just need a little, uh, what do they call those things? A harbor, but there's something more picture, a cove. Oh, but there's a sleep podcast I already called it. So it's a nice place where you could just drift away. And to me, that means providing resources. So, so there's resources to organizations you can connect with right now if you're having a tough time right now. Now, uh, helplines, text lines, and it means supporting the members of our community uh, through my actions. And then if you want to be a part of change, if you want to say Black Lives Matter with your actions, there's links to organizations where you could get started. Or if you've been impacted by racism, those links are in the show notes uh, and there for you as a resource. And uh, that is, uh, uh, oh, the, like, yeah. And then uh, these are the sponsors that enable me to be here twice a week for you. If you're ever curious about them tomorrow, when your hand hits that refrigerator and opens the door, door, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Thanks. Hey, everybody. It's Scoots here. We got something new we're trying out. I'm trying to find more free ways for people to support the podcast. Now, what if you could let people know about the podcast uh, that might actually benefit from it and get rewarded for it? Uh, now, that's something we're trying out here. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. I don't know how you spell reefer, but it's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. But it, like uh, maybe I'll even put reefer. I think reefer has two E's, but refer only has one E. Reefer is like a reused freezer, by the way. Anybody who's want you say, what, Mommy, what's a reefer? Re- re- reusable freezer. Uh, or re- recently renewed. Anyway, I was trying to keep this short. Uh, so if you, you know, and you can, the top three people that share, that get the most new subscribers, again, this won't work if you want to spam people because you got to get real listeners. But the top three people for January, February, and March are going to get Sleep With Me branded sleep phones. So you could win a free set of sleep phones. You could also get some great British Bake Off bonus shows for referring people. And you just go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer and sign up. The other free way, great free way to help the show is to test out sponsor stuff. When sponsors have free trials, sign up for those free trials. So let me know about it as a part of Sleepy Supporter Zone. The reason they offer the free trials is because they're really confident, uh, you know, with Beachbody or Headspace or Plush Care or Warby Parker. They know what they make or the service they offer is great. And so they they want you to try it out, but but you get to try it out for free. So that's another free way to help out the show. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, what do you say? I like a turn it over to Scoots. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. If you've been having trouble meeting your goals or difficulty with relationships, trouble sleeping, or you're feeling stressed or depressed, BetterHelp is available. BetterHelp offers online professional counselors who can help and listen. And you simply fill out a questionnaire to assess your needs, BetterHelp will match you with your own professional licensed therapist. And you could start communicating with them in under 48 hours. And this isn't self-help or a crisis line. This is secure online professional counseling. BetterHelp's counselors have a broad range of expertise. So if it's not available locally, that's the amazing thing about BetterHelp. They can match you with a professional licensed counselor with an area of expertise you're looking for. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log in anytime. I keep hearing from listeners that sign up how much they love that they're able to send unlimited messages to their counselor, and then they get timely and thoughtful responses back. Plus, you can schedule your video or phone sessions, and everything you share is confidential. You don't have to worry about sitting in a waiting room. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so it's easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling. Financial aid is available. 
hole. And in fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And therapy has been a huge part of my life with the right licensed therapist. It took me a while to find the right person, but I can look back at milestones in my life over the past eight years and these major turning points. And that counselor was there as I journeyed from one phase to the next. They were giving me the tools in the toolbox. They were listening to me when I just needed someone to talk to and to talk stuff out with. And, and it's changed my life. I'm so grateful for the professional relationship I have with my therapist. And this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And Sleep With Me listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. Now that's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R, H-E-L-P dot com slash sleep with me. And you can join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp professional. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you to hear. It's where I pop my peas, if you please. And I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors and then let the sponsors know about it. Uh, that's how I'm able to be here for a free choice week. I want to thank May and Casey, who both placed orders with Apollo. And if you want to see a video of me using my Apollo band, uh, you can check it out on our sponsor website. It, like it was the different times of the day I use it, where I wear it. It's it's an amazing device. And then I want to thank Belinda, who signed up with Daily Harvest, and Megan, who referred eight people to the podcast through our referral site at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. So if you support a sponsor, tag them, tag me in a social media post. If you want to be like May, Casey, Belinda, or Megan, and I could try to thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Uh, the next part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. There's links to organizations you can connect with right now in our show notes and it's being a part of change it's saying black lives matter with our actions there's links to organizations you can connect with to get you started right in our show notes and the third part of the sleepy supporter zone is something i support this is a little bit different it's something i'm in progress but i want to encourage you to support a local organization or something that's you know you're close to that that helps uh, other other people uh right now trying to get something going with an organization that is uh, supporting local restaurants and uh, feeding people that are hungry. But there's local organizations you can connect with out there. And then, just, you know, tag me, tag the organization on social media, and let's let's boost the volume there as well. And uh, that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, which is now over. Oh, Mystery Bart, a lot of people help out on that sh th this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Zone Sounds like an earful Wrote the theme song Carl W. The Legend also Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer, and Ashley. And runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team that is down or on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. It's almost Christmas, y'all. You can tell me the story, yeah. I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook. Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your moderators. You get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud that we could dance. We're raising money for the Water Wheel Foundation. And Scooter might get Thanks, Mystery Bard. I'm at Dearest Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you could find me. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake. It could be thoughts, on, you know, things you're thinking about, things on your mind. Uh, so, like, uh, I don't know, my mind just went blank as soon as I said things on your mind. It could be that, though, you see. Why can't, I mean, that happens to me a lot. I say, why can't I remember that? Uh, and then I try to remember it, and it's like trying to find a, uh, 
trying to find something in one of my, you know, my closet or a pile. Or, you know, when I put stuff down. Uh, yeah, and I said, what happened to that letter that I needed to open? That I needed to think about opening? You heard that tangent a few months ago. Anyway, whether it's thoughts that you're thinking about, that could be from the past, present, or future. Feelings that come up related to those thoughts, uh, obviously I've had a few. But it could just be feelings that are there, sensations or physical, you know, anything physical going on with you. Schedule changes. I talked to Gavin yesterday, and uh, a lot of times Gavin's got to go to sleep at noon. And I hear from a lot of listeners that have to go to sleep at those times of day. It's not easy, uh, especially when it's an irregular, right? could be some other thing, or it could be something you just don't know. Whatever is keeping you awake, I'd like to take your mind off of that and keep you company while you drift off. And what I'm going, or what I propose to do, and what you could see if you're willing to, to, you know, to, to, to come along, is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones. Oh, so creaky are my dulcet tones. Pointless meanders. Superfluous tangents. So I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. And all that stuff. All to keep you company while you fall asleep. So, I don't know. My mind just went blank again. Oh, yeah. I guess I, I kind of said... So here's a couple of things. If you're new that you would want to know, or you might want to know, this podcast does not work for everybody. So just give it a few tries. And, and that's not coming from me. That's coming from hundreds of thousands of people that said, hey, it took, believe it or not, hundreds of thousands of people have told me, it took two or three tries to get used to you. And I said, yeah, that sounds about right. Because of course, if you're, if somebody told you about this podcast, you say, well, it's supposed to put me to sleep. What do you mean? Not sure about this guy's voice, and he doesn't seem to. This content seems to be. He plays loose and fast with his content, and I say you're correct about that. So just see how it goes. So that's one thing. If you're skeptical, doubtful, or unsure, that's a normal response to the show. But I hope it can put you to sleep, or at least to keep you company while you fall asleep. This is also a podcast you don't really listen to. You just kind of barely pay attention to it. Uh, I barely engage you. And I can give you something to kind of listen to while you drift off. You say, oh, okay, I can listen to this. And it takes me, ideally, it barely distra- I barely distract you from whatever is keeping you awake. And then, oh, the other thing is, not only is this a podcast you don't really listen to, it's also a sleep podcast that doesn't put you to sleep. <laughs> This is strange, uh, but I'm here to keep you company as you drift off. So I'm really just here to be your your bedtime bore teller. First time I made that word up, uh, maybe. But I, really, just to keep you company as you drift off. That's why the shows are over an hour, so you have plenty of time. And... Uh, if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here to the very end. So I'm here just as much to keep you company... I'm here to keep you company, whether you're awake or asleep, and whether you're listening or not. Uh, so really, hopefully, you don't feel any pressure. No pressure to listen. No pressure to fall asleep. I'm going to be here for about an hour. I used to say that all the time. I don't know what part of the podcast I used to say that in. And uh, maybe I already see Scooch, you say that right. Okay, okay, yeah, I said it right at the beginning. I don't remember. It's... Okay, so those are a couple of things. The other thing that throws people off, podcast listeners in particular, is the structure of the show. And the show's structured very deliberately, but also it's very malleable. So I'll tell you the normal structure and then how people use the show in different ways. So the show starts off with a greeting, so you feel welcome. Then it has uh, resources for listeners and sponsors. That's how it's able to be here twice a week for free. Then there's an intro. And the intro goes from like a minute six or eight to minute like 20-something. And that can really throw people off because you say, well, the intro is like one-third of the podcast. And I'd say, well, 20, 40, 60. Yeah, about one-third of the podcast. You're right. And But the intro kind of serves two purposes. One, it introduces new listeners to the show. 
so I can tell you all this stuff. So you say, oh, okay, I was skeptical and doubtful, and now I still am, but at least I know what to expect, and so, and I'm kind of getting relaxed here. So that's one purpose intro serves, to introduce a show in a long-winded, meandering way with kindness, because it, it, it's really my job to earn your trust. You, you don't really owe me anything. Like, uh, even listening two or three tra- times, I just can ask it because, uh, you know, I hope I can put you to sleep. So, yeah, it's my job to, to, to build some rapport. So that's part of the intro, too. But for regular listeners, what up, my regular listeners, and all the pets, the fishes, and other pets out there, ma- mammalian pets, and, you know, warm-blooded or cold-blooded, I got a warm spot in my heart for you. As long as you're keeping a distance, cold-blooded beings, uh, uh, you know, I, I can share my warmth metaphorically with you. But that's it. Uh, uh, so, sorry, that was a tangent. But so the regular listeners, uh, the podcast, uh, the intro serves as part of their wind-down routine. So you can listen as you're getting ready for bed or as you're in bed drifting off or as you're doing something else relaxing, even if it's just sitting around. I mean, that's pretty relaxing. When I mean, I, I don't really, I barely have the ability to, to do that, just lie around. But when I do, I say, wow, I should do this more often. Just lie on the floor. You know, when you lie on the floor and look at the room upside down, like I say, this is great. Uh, why don't I do this every day? I say, well, because I, as Popeye once said, I am who I am. And it's not like, uh, so, oh, so the intro, what was I saying? Oh, so it just gives you some distance from the day and eases you into bedtime. Because for most of us, uh, like we've tried other sleep solutions, right? And those are supposed to work right away. They're, They're not as sustainable or realistic. And even sleep with me, it's only sustainable and realistic for the people it kind of fits like a puzzle piece with. So that's how the intro works. But some people skip the intro. They start the show at 20 minutes, about 3% of listeners. Then a few thousand people listen to story-only versions on our Patreon. And then some people listen all night. Even though the podcast isn't really designed to be listened to all night, uh, that's an option too. And then some people start the podcast when they wake up in the middle of the night or whatever. And other people listen during the day. So it's kind of like you see, like first start off listening to the intro and then kind of see how it goes for you is uh, the the only advice I can give is uh, see what works for you. Then there's business between the intro and the show. That's just how podcast structure works. Uh, It's called the mid roll, even though it's not in the middle of the show. And those are the sponsors that, you know, again, able us to be here for you. Then there's a story. Tonight it'll be a crossover tribute episode to Orbiting Human Circus of the Air. A brilliant and amazing podcast that I love so, so much. And I hope you discover it. And if you're still, like, using your phone right now or you have a pen or paper, write down to subscribe or use the link in our show notes tomorrow to check out that show it's going to change it'll make your daytime almost as good as your bedtime maybe even better so that this uh, it'll be a meandering version of the season two premiere so that's uh, that's the story it will be a bedtime story woven out of another podcast then there's thank yous at the end of the show so that's the structure of the show and the reason I make the show, I guess, is threefold. I usually say it's twofold, but tonight I was thinking it's threefold. It's like, uh, you deserve a good night's sleep. That's the main reason I make the show. You deserve a place where you can rest, get the rest you need, and ideally, you know, live your life uh, and, not, and have it more manageable or even be in a place where you can flourish. So that's one reason. The other reason, is, the reason too, is I've been there at night, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep, uh, all those things. So I know how it feels. I know the deep, dark desperation in the deep, dark night very well. And if I can offer any kind of salve or a bomb or distraction from that, some reassurance that you're not alone. That is like the greatest honor I could ever have in my life, really. 
I mean, besides being the, da- the parent of the coolest daughter in the world, but, uh, so, um, so that's why I make the show. And the third thing is, I guess it's the daytime, right? The daytime kind of sticks around at nighttime. And I was thinking of that fastest false start. And then I was thinking of the word false fart. I'll be honest. So you can go ahead and bore giggle. For some reason that word makes most people giggle no matter what. But I was thinking about it when I said it. I was like, well, false farts are a thing that could keep me up at night. And I'm sure a lot of people have experienced the, the old fal- false fart. There's probably another term for it, but I don't know why people don't just say, sorry, that, like, a, like in a meeting or a conference or Zoom nowadays, uh, you say, no, no, that, like, that was a false fart. Just, to, just wanted to let everybody know that was my chair or that was my elbow on the, um, whatever this linoleum is. Uh, like, uh, Instead of, like, for me, if I do a false fart, then I say, oh, boy, everybody's going to think it. Everybody's looking at me. Or poor, poor Mildred. They're thinking Mildred did it. I hope, and I don't hope. I feel bad and I feel good that everybody's looking at Mildred. Maybe I should make another false fart. You know, don't you have always have that one? That's usually how I do it. It's like, uh, okay, let me wait a little while. Then I'll see if I can recreate the sound multiple times in a row so that people know it's not real, right? One time that happened in high school, and the teacher stopped teaching the class because, it, like, he's, like they, they, he still didn't realize that it was uh, that I was doing, I was covering up my false fart with more false farts so they would delineate that it was my shoe. This time it was the tip of, I think I must have had a new pair of boots or something. And if the tip of your boot, like, uh, you scrape it on a, like, a linoleum floor. And they stopped the whole class and they said, do you need to go to the, uh, do you need, like, uh, and I said, no, no, it's my, sh-. like, uh, it wasn't actually embarrassing because it was so over the top. And the teacher was laughing, but not la- like, like it was one of those moments of relief. Like it was so obvious that it wasn't, um. Even there was no um, negative feelings involved, and it was also funny because the teacher was just hit in hysterics, and the whole class was like, kind of like you just say, like uh, maybe they thought, "Wow, this kid has such self-esteem. He's just going, uh, he's just letting his body take its natural course." Which is, of course, they did. I say, "Well, you don't really know me, obviously," but then I said, "No, no, it's my shoe," and then I made the sound a couple more times. Sorry about that. I didn't even know about it. Uh, wasn't trying to be, and it also wasn't a, like from a teacher's perspective, you could think you were doing it to be disruptive, which at the time, I guess I was saying, well, is it, I mean, I could have said, well, this is accidentally disruptive because of my first disruption, I didn't want you to think that was an actual eruption. It was just an unintentional disruption. So now I'm being disruptive to make it clear, you know what I'm saying? And that's the kind of stuff that can keep some of us up at night. <laughs> I mean, right? You say, oh, man, what, I wonder what people are thinking from that meeting. Like, I was there to pitch, you know, the newest, uh, you know, the, my my idea about Boo Berry's cousin and Count Chalk. You know, that was, uh, you know, be, and best friends with Count Chocula. And, uh, you know, I made that false fart. But I'm, I think they think it was real. What, it, like. Uh, but I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, when you think about it on the reverse side, you really don't hold it against people, I don't think. I, mean, I don't know, maybe, do I? No, that's gonna keep, are you the kind of person that holds false farts against people, Scooter? Well, and that's what's going to be going through my head tonight. But uh, I think one thing that you're listening, if you get over these boar giggles, is uh, that this kind of unites us, right? We've all been through that. And, uh, and sometimes we've been through it on the real, you say, well, that, no, that was not false. Uh, it was unplanned for sure. Uh, so we've been there and we've also all been there in the deep, dark night. So I'm glad you're here. Give the show, please give the show a few tries just to see if it can help you because you deserve a good night's sleep. I'm glad you're here. I yearn and I strive uh, to make the best possible show I can. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by.
Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive, one of the country's leading providers of auto insurance. With Progressive's Name Your Price tool, you could say what kind of coverage you're looking for and how much you want to pay, and Progressive will help you find options that fit within your budget. Use the Name Your Price tool and start an online quote today at Progressive.com. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody, this is something I'm very excited to present to you tonight. It's a, another tribute crossover episode of an amazing, amazing podcast, uh, The Orbiting Human Circus of the Air. If it's the first time hearing of uh, The Orbiting Human Circus, open up your podcast app of choice and type it in and subscribe. I'm going to be doing uh, Season 2, Episode 1, Naughty Till New Year's, uh, firstly, The Janitor. And I highly suggest you, you have a lot of options. You could start with season two and listen to season two. You could binge season one. You, there's also the extended edition of season one. I mean, if I, if I was saying, you know, what's your best bet? I would listen to season one, uh, the, the original version. Then I would listen to season two. Hmm, well, maybe I would listen to this episode. Then season two, episode one. If you're really, like, really excited, but all, then listen to all of season one, all of season two, then the extended edition of season one, uh, so you could hear all the behind the scenes. I don't want to reveal too much about the show, uh, because I think you should really discover it for yourself, but it's made by Julian Coster. And Julian uh, and Christy Gressman came to my first live show I ever did at uh, po- the first PodCon. And both have been really encouraging throughout the history of Sleep With Me and very supportive. And, uh, like, I just remember listening to this this show. It really is uh, joyful and it's exciting. It's visionary. It's dreamy. It's super cool. But it's really fun. and, And so I just highly recommend discovering it for yourself. That's why I'm doing this episode. And, uh, so without further, and, and I'm really saying, well, this is going to be interesting. This is a, cause it's a very, very, this, I guess will be a sleepy version of it. I say, well, how's, what's this going to be like? I don't know. I've, I haven't recorded it yet. So without further ado, I'd like to present the Orbiting Human Circus of the Air, season two, episode one, Naughty Till New Year's, uh, firstly, the janitor. And as you uh, start to relax, uh, your mind starts to journey all the way out to, to some farmland where just on a rise sits a barn. Right on the top of that hill, you could see it there. There's the barn and the silo. And you can hear those barnyard sounds. And then also you hear the sound of, this is a dual narration within a narration. As another narrator comes in and takes the narration over from even me and says, In a barn deep in the country as night falls upon the earth. The animals turn their expectant gaze towards a small radio mounted on the wall. And what animals? You may say, well, there's the cows, there's the sheep, there's the chickens and the hens and the roosters. There's some bunnies. There's even some local M-O-U-S-E mouse poos. There's some ducks and some ducklings. I don't know if they're actually farm animals, but they live on the farm. Uh, there's a kitty, peace, peace-loving kitty cat, uh, well, so well behaved. And you know, other oh yeah, what other farm animal? Oh, of course, of course, those farm animals are there too. And you can just hear the radio; it's crackling. In that joyous uh, radio, you could feel it in your chest. Uh, It's playing this wonderful uh, and strange exercise broadcast. You know, let's get it. Come on, let's pump it now. Get those knees up. Uh, There's brass music behind the exercise. You could just uh, see someone in about 1917, one of those 1917 working out radio shows pumping and lifting and 
stretch in your sides. And just past the barn is a farmhouse, and inside that farmhouse, it's it's still school time, but it's the end of that school day. N- narrator. And in the farmhouse, uh, children rush till their homework is done. And uh, why don't we, hey Scooter, why don't we work together here and uh, become? Why don't we take two narrators and make them one? Sounds good to me. There's writing. On the paper, there's text pages turning. The children are trying to get done. And the farm boy, well, this is going to be the best show ever, isn't it? I can't, can't wait. And I'm your sister. Hurry, we got to get our homework done. Oh, I'm done. I'm going to be done in a second. I just have to shuffle some more papers. I have to erase this one part of the equation. Come on, let's pull our chairs out. Let's get that radio on. Can you turn the radio on, please? Uh, I just, oh, I'm done too, brother. Are you uh, putting it on? Yes, sister, I am. I'm tuning it. Oh, it's still the exercise broadcast. Uh, must just be finishing up. Uh, he's uh, doing his cool down stretching. Now, somewhere else. Uh, not far away from the farm, but not too close either. There's the sounds of a street. There's cars going by. There's people talking, and college students hurry home from their evening out. Some alone, some in pairs, holding hands and glancing at the clock as they hasten their pace. And everywhere, there's hands on dials, hands on dials, tuning that radio. That sound of the radio dial tuning, searching, searching for something in particular, searching with anticipation. It's a colorful, rhythmic sound of fuzz and different genres of music. Elsewhere, we hear buttons being pressed and dials being turned. Maybe even a crank or two. Oh, those radio sounds layered upon layer, window upon window, room upon room. Because you see, all of these radios, we are moments away from the appearance of a very special new star whose capturing of the public imagination can be likened to nothing since perhaps a group of Beatles went on the Ed Sullivan show. Life has stopped. And as all goes silent, people realize they will someday ask each other where they were at this moment. The sounds of the city play against the shuffling of the radio dials, and a woman says, Hey, bub, you gonna listen? Yep, we got a radio in back, ma'am. A bunch of us are gonna be listening back. Uh, in between our shifts, uh, short order cooks right about here, right about now. I gotta go, I gotta flip these eggs and get back there. Such a nice image, uh, isn't it? Uh, and even backstage at the Grand Theater from which the broadcast will come, The crew glances around, hoping to catch a glimpse of the star. And Chief Stagehand Letitia Seltier, running the whole show, can't help but be swept up in the excitement as she gathers her crew around her. Hello, Bernard. Hey, you can't watch here forever, no, because they're going to exit this way. I'm going to talk to everyone in five minutes, okay, by the loading dock. My job. Hey, I'm going to talk to everyone. I know, but you could come back. You could come back. Yep, yeah, come on. I've got to talk to everyone right now. I mean, in five minutes. That's right. In five minutes that passed almost instantly. We're getting close to that loading dock as we hear people cheering, uh, squealing anticipation, the chattering of people waiting in line who can't wait to get inside the theater. Okay, everyone, come close, come close, come, no, come, come a little closer, just a little, no, no, even closer, a little bit closer still. I know you're worried about getting too close, but don't worry, not tonight. Okay, stage hands, this is it, huh? 
We waited a long time for this, and uh, it's here now. And, you know, if I know I've been a little bit tough on you, but you deserve it. Ah, uh, stagehands, you know, we're stagehands. What can we say? Uh, yep, uh, bantering, bantering with the other stagehands here. Ah, uh, you do, you do, truly. I want you to know that I'm proud to work with you, and I'm proud of the work that we do here. You're the best crew that I know. If I could choose a group of people to go into, like a like on a reality show with a lot of challenges, or a game show even, or even some sort of competitive dancing, or where you dress up as a costumed performer, whether it be a dancer or a singer, or break dancing. Or, you know, what about, is there any skipping competitions? What if it was just skipping for jo- whatever it is? Competition or just a joyous experience? I would be proud to be with all of you, to go there at your side, as your leader and as your equal. You know, we might not end up, if it was for competition, we might end up losing. We may even buy the big farm. It well, may be one of those competitions where that's how it ends up. Uh, but if I did, if we did, you know, I'd be happy. I'd be happy about it to be with all of you. But what, as a narrator, I have to ask, uh, in a non-rhetorical way, but an inquisitive way, what has brought us to this remarkable moment? Well, it all started with a song. Before it was a song, it may have been just a spoken word. A song sung on that very stage, just a little song. Sung by someone of so little importance that even their trying to sing was, well, touching. You see, it made us feel that if someone so small so insignificant could raise up his voice and find happiness, so could we. And so we, in our rooms, reach for our radio dials across the globe. We hear kitty cats, we hear rain, we hear the sound of freshly painted nails on a teenager turning a dial. We hear the anxious steps of the parents wondering what their teenage daughter is tuning into on the radio and then realizing in their own excitement building. Yeah, I'm trying to tune it in, uh, but the antenna's not working. Um, uh, well, my dear, do you, would you want me to help? It? Would, would you like me to help with your antenna? I can get some tinfoil. Dad, get out of my room, please. Okay, I'll just uh, walk away slowly. If I miss, I don't think tinfoil would help anyway, but if I miss this show, please, if I just can, uh, the reason I polished my nails was just to get this one dial. If I just move it a fraction of an inch, a billionth of an inch, there it is, the fluttering orchestral banjo line. There's some familiar, sweet, sweet sounds. Uh, Oh, the music. The static underneath, the chattering, my heart is beating. In the grand ballroom at the top of the Eiffel Tower, the red velvet curtains part, and suddenly the giant on air sign above the stage lights up. Broadcasting from the top of the Eiffel Tower, the orbiting human circus of the air. Friends in the audience, friends at home, it's so good to be here with all of you. Now, you all know there's someone very special in the building. Oh, yes, I love hearing your cheering. The crowd is going wild. But get a hold of yourself, please. Stay calm. Thank you. Well, it is appropriate that we, who brought you the tap-dancing mice, the aerialist bovine cannonballs, should at last bring you a certain someone who sang a certain song. Oh, your, your enthusiasm, my ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. 
makes us want to start the musical intro. But before we bring him out, uh, hold your applause. Let's, okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's powerful applause. First, with the very own version of the very song that started it all, I give you the Orbiting Human Circus Orchestral featuring Romika, the extraordinary singing saw. Romika here. I'm not allowed to sing tonight, but to calmly voice this in my saw, creaky, dulcet saw voice. But I want you to think of a tranquil sound. I don't know if you've ever heard a saw sing, but I'm confident you'll like it. So when you listen again, when you listen in the day with that same anticipation, when you tune me in, you won't just hear me singing, you'll feel me singing. And I want you to remember that tranquil feeling. It'll probably hit you right in the center of your chest, uh, and it'll feel good. As a singing song, I'm confident of uh, that. Uh, thank you. And so the saw song rings out, filling the ballroom at the top of the Eiffel Tower and out into the night, reaching radios. And we can see in the barn the animals enjoying the song, looking at one another and feeling it in their chests and even singing along, buying and mooing and crowing, meowing. Hoof, hoofs strike the floor, not in protest, but in a, a, I don't know, an involuntary exclamation. Radios in the farmhouse. Uh, brothers and sisters looking at one another. Do you like it? I love it. Radios the world over. Across the globe, in cities, in the countryside, gathered around the radio, being touched physically, emotionally, and hourly uh, by the song. But there is one lonely soul who's not listening to the radio. At the back of the stage, behind the singing saw, Behind the shimmering backdrop, inside the brick wall, is a heating duct. And so comfy and cozy within there, all curled up, uh, all snug like a bug in a bed, is Julian, the janitor here at the Eiffel Tower. Ouchie poo, I bumped to my head. I was, I thought, who hit his head? It's okay. It's just, I just more brushed my head. And who's okay, who just brushed his head inside the heating duct. The duct at which he's accustomed to sneaking into the theater and from which he can hear in just a barely glimpse a world so beautiful it could only exist in his dreams. The broadcast ballroom. But why? Does he seem so incredibly nervous? And we can be there with him inside the duct, so cozy, so comforted, and so calm. And a little bit nervous as we hear the sound of applause. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh God. Listen to the size of that audience. Good heavens, why his heart is pounding. A bumpity bump, bump, bumpity bump. Calm down, calm down. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just read along. Uh, we, it'll be, we, we could do it. Uh, and all we live, and all we know, and all we laughed together. And who alone? Oh, no, as the narrator, I don't know if he can sing along or read along. He, the, the audience may, may hear him. Sang how we sing, knew how we knew, and all we ask forever is, may we go? 
So we'll be old and weary friends. God bless and let this never end. But that singing, that reading along, he does sound very right reading along or singing that song. It's almost as if it's his song. And yet there are certain songs we like because we feel as if it's really us singing. And it's true that he's not the only one singing or going along with it. In the wings of the stage of the broadcast ballroom, stagehand Jacques is also going along. Uh, backstage, Jacques is uh, using a, a technique called uh, talking, humming, or singing. Uh, yes, uh, I say, wish I cannot sing, but I can go. This is a nice song. I hearing singing. I wish I could sing along. Uh, Jacques, you sing like a bit like a fish. Ah, merci. And backstage, even chief stagehand Letitia Saltier, running the whole show, goes along. I know we sang together. Oh, Letitia, sing it. Ah, thank you, Lily. And as she walks to our host, John Cameron's dressing room door, behind which we find him, fixing an uncharacteristic drink. Yeah, I'm going to put some ice in here. Then I'm going to take the ice back out. Oh, there's a knock at my door. Come in. Ah, Letitia, your kind of singing is beautiful. Letitia, please, please don't sing that song. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Wait, 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 is it time? I can't believe I have to go on stage with him this night of all nights, our first show back. John, pull yourself together. We have to go. Let's go, let's go. Meanwhile, in the heating duct, cozy and comforting, is Julian, our janitor, still singing and reading along. In all we live, in all we know, in all we laugh together, and who alone sings how we sang, knows how we knew, and all we'll ask forever is, bring us to, oh, we'll be old and weary friends, God bless, let all this never end, oh, we'll, oh, uh, oh, oh uh, something's uh, poking at me. Uh, Julian, this is the narrator. What seems to be the matter? I don't know. Something's like uh, up, up, some some sort of uh, uh, forest friend just kissed me. While on stage, the song comes to an end. The song being sung by the singing saw, and John Cameron prepared to make the introduction the whole world waited for. And the show goes on the air. The audience applauds and. John Cameron opens up his, his purely dulcet tones. That was the Orbiting Human Circus Orchestral, featuring Romika, the singing saw. As the narrator, I just hope he doesn't start with any jokes related to our, like, uh, the next performance. Please, John. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you a young performer who is short of everything except inspiration. Oh, no. Here to debut a brand new song as an artist of whom I could say so little, so little. John Cameron, please, uh, as the narrator, I'm cringing. John Cameron, please, no, please, no. So easily overlooked, a talent so atomic in its scope that he needs no introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, friends beyond the binary, I say to you, here he is. The audience goes wild, but nothing happens, and John Cameron speaks again. Here he is. Play, play the intro, please. Nothing. Okay, uh, play, uh, here he is. Uh, the audience says, confused. John Cameron, please uh, take control. Uh, is he here? Uh, where, 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 where is he? Where, where, is, where is he? 
John Cameron's on his hands and knees looking for something. Oh, you, like, uh, come on, I don't ask a lot of you. Where are you, you little, uh, F-L-E-A? Did you flee F-L-E-E me, you F-L-E-A? Perhaps one short joke less and none of this would have happened. With the whole world listening, there is nothing but the most dreaded sound of all. Big farm in the sky air. The stagehands run to and fro, looking all over. But our star performer is nowhere to be found because he's hiding in, in, he's snuggling with, uh, with, uh, in the heating duct? Now, let's not jump to any hasty conclusions. I know the fact he's hiding in a heating duct seems to narrow it down greatly. Let's think clearly. There doesn't seem to be anybody else in the heating duct. Hmm. I mean, the janitor does look uh, pretty small, especially curled up that way. And we know his biggest dream is being on stage. Is it possible that he is the small soul that the whole world has waited for? I'll tell you what, let's go back in time and listen to him singing once more, because there lies our answer. Oh, we'll be old and weary friends. Now, you'll remember this. It was just moments ago. He was in the heating duct. He's singing, and we listen for a moment. Yes, it's just as I thought. He's pestered by a clinging distraction as he sings. And nobody is quite as critical of vocal interpretation as the song's own author. Oh, we'll be old and... Oh, why are you poking me? Especially when our small little friend has not been fed proper pre-show buffet, like, uh, you know, what it would like for dinner. You see, the whole world is waiting for a flea. A musical flea, which is hiding in the janitor's sock, unbeknownst to him. I know we'll need a moment to process this. There is an explanation, but let's stay with the janitor right now. Here, exactly as he is. Because this is the feeling the janitor loves so much, all of us gathered together. The joyful presence of a crowd. And isn't it when we're dreaming? that were closest to our dreams. He really is dreaming. Under the starry night sky of Paris, there's not another soul within a thousand feet. You can picture the Eiffel Tower above the city of Paris at night, the wind blowing. And there, up high, but snug as a bug, or a bug in a sock, in a, snug is our janitor in a very, very, very secure spot up on the top of the Eiffel Tower, sleeping, totally strapped in, with a silver bucket wedged between his feet and a rag in his hand. He, of course, is supposed to be working. But wait, he's waking up. Oh, boy. Come on, Julian. You can do better than this. No good will come of you if you fall asleep when you're supposed to be working. I gotta get up uh, and start mopping these. They said they want these girders uh, shining in a with a, in a matte way, so they look good. But let's get back to everything you've heard up until now. It's important. There's a story to what the janitor's been dreaming. He dreams when he's awake too. You see, the janitor likes to imagine he's part of the show. It's something he's always done. He can't help doing. In fact, he's doing it right now. It helps him pass the 23 hours and 45 minutes he spends alone each day. Oh, I gotta get... Let me dip dip twice, then ring, then dip again, then ring out the mop, uh, and then scrub the girder. He likes to imagine a narrator. That's me. As I mop, I say to my, oh, please let some good come of me. And he likes to imagine something can hear him when he speaks into the void that way. And that's, that's you. And I'm going to keep scrubbing here and mop. Oh, let me, I got to use a rag on this one. 
Okay. Uh, hi. I've, I've just had this feeling I haven't felt in so long, but something just reminded me. You know when something just reminds you? When I was a kid, my great-grandpa took me to a radio broadcast at this broadcast ballroom. He was performing on it. He was a stage hypnotist. And, you know, I, I kind of headed out on my own to be with him, away from my parents. Uh, and I stayed with him for a little while. But at some point I realized it couldn't last and I'd have to go back to my regular life, which, uh, you know, made me sad. And, of course, my great-grandpa saw this. So on this night, he invited me to come be a part of the show. It was in this big, beautiful theater. There was lights everywhere and all this radio equipment. And normally his act would be all of these uh, stunts with hypnosis. People seeing things that weren't there, wonderful things. People would hear things that weren't there, even smell things. It was amazing. But he said tonight was going to be different. And as soon as we got to the ballroom, he took me backstage and he pulled me aside and he said, Julian, this has got to be a secret between you and me. And he looked around to see if anyone could hear. And he took me in the dressing room and he closed the door. And he got down on his knees and he looked at me. And he said, Julian, tonight I'm going to attempt a great stunt. And it might be the most important thing I'll ever do. But nobody can know, except for you. And then he checked the door to see if anyone was listening, and he whispered in my ear, and he told me, I'm going to hypnotize all of Paris. He was going to hypnotize everybody listening, to be happy. That's what he was doing. But he wasn't going to tell them he was doing it. He was going to slip all the suggestions into his normal act secretly, so no one would notice. He said, everyone listening, later tonight, they'll begin to feel happy. He said, you know how sometimes you feel a cool breeze and it's like the first breeze that lets you know autumn is coming? Or when you smell something and it reminds you of the first time when you were so happy? And I said, yeah. And he said, someday, when that happens, you're going to remember tonight. And then there was a knock at the door, and they came to get him, to take him on stage. But he told them to wait. And he got down on my level, on his knees, and he looked me in the eyes. And he said, do you believe me? And I didn't know what he meant, but they kept knocking. And he said, I don't have time to explain what I need you to do when I do this. I need to be able to see you by the side of the stage, and when I look at you, I need to be able to see in your eyes that you really believe I can do it. And then he just looked at me. I'd never seen him care about something that way. And he said, do you believe I can do it? And I said, yes. And then he got up and went with them. But then he stopped and he turned around and he said, I want you to cross your fingers for me. And I did. And I showed him. And then they went off. And I followed them. As far as the end of the stage, and he went out, and the audience applauded. And then he stopped in the middle of the stage, and he turned around, and he looked right at me. And the whole theater saw it. And I looked at him, and I loved him with every inch of my soul. And I believed he could do it as hard as I can. And then he started his act. And I got so absorbed, I forgot how sad I'd been. And then I watched, and it was the same act I've seen him do before. And then that's it. The audience applauds. He comes off stage, and he doesn't want to talk to anyone but me. He comes straight to me. And he shook my hand, and he said, I think we pulled that off. And then he tells me he's going to take me out to see it happen. I got my coat, and I go out the door. So there we are, me and my great-grandpa, walking into Paris. We were going out on the town, and I'd never been out on the town before. And he says that the suggestions can start to take effect at any time. And he takes my hand, and he says, I hope it works. And he actually looks nervous. I wanted it to work. I wanted it to work so bad. I wanted to see it. And I opened my eyes wide, and I looked for any sign I could find that it was beginning to happen. 
and, and we go into this restaurant because I have to pee. And when I came out of the bathroom, this lady at this table looked at me and smiled. And then I heard people laughing. And I didn't even hear a joke. And it was coming from the kitchen and they were working. And they weren't having fun like us. And I showed my great grandpa there were two people hugging goodbye and they kissed. And this old lady was petting a cat. And she didn't even have to smile. And this woman was sweeping the streets all alone and she had no reason to be happy. But you could see she was happy. And I started looking at my great grandfather and smiling, and he was smiling too, because we were the only ones that knew why. And I looked around with my great grandpa. We went all over Paris and everywhere. Everyone was laughing and smiling, and we couldn't stop laughing. Everyone I looked at was smiling back at me. And uh, Julian, just the narrator, and uh, uh, Julian, you still haven't figured it out, have you? It worked on who? It worked on me. That's right. And now we return to the girders at the top of the Eiffel Tower where the jander, a bucket balanced between his feet and a rag in his hand, has just told you about his great-grandfather. Now, this was different from his more fanciful tales, and you'll understand why later. In fact, the story of the orbiting human circus began the moment the janitor was asked, Oh boy, I just squeezed that rag over the edge. And the water's pouring down. It's going to get somebody's head wet. Uh, but I can't tell you right now because uh, the janitor's just dripped some water from his rag. And if it drips, on, oh no, it's uh, water's b b dripping. And it looks like it's going to drip on someone's head uh, and make their head wet. Uh, who could it possibly, who could this water possibly drip on, uh, Julian? Oh, Coco. You're right, Coco, the night watchman, your only friend, Coco. Oh, Julian's rushing down to make sure, with a, hopefully with a dry rag, it looks like he forgot that, though, to dry Coco's head. Rushing down a staircase after staircase after staircase, flying proverbially down the staircases, past the janitor's closet in which he lives. There's something about a janitor descending the stairs of the Eiffel Tower that is absolutely comforting. Flight after flight of dark and empty, lonely stairs. Maybe the stairs smile for their being used. Uh, far below, he hears the drip, drip, drip in the splat, splat, splat of water. On hair, hair, on the skull, on the head. Even a little bit of a squeal because the water's a little bit cold. Now, uh, the janitor is a little bit out of breath as he gets towards the bottom. Huffing. Uh, Coco, Coco, Coco. Uh, there, uh, looking. At Julian as he comes down the stairs is Coco. Oh, Coco, Coco. Uh, just looking, because Coco had not even registered because it was only, was only hit by one drip of water. But Coco's also surprised at the worried look on uh, Julian's face. Uh, he says, no, I didn't squeal because uh, a bunch of water dripped on my head. Now that you mention, I thought there might have been one drain, raindrop, but, uh, oh, it's okay. Calm down, buddy. Take it easy. Relax. What happened? Well, well I, I, was, I was in the heating duct behind the stage in the broadcast ballroom, you know, and, and Mr. Cameron, he was coming on stage to introduce, uh, and we hear uh, Julian recapping his evening, but there's something quite usual about this interchange, the two of them conversing this way, Coco asking a question and then the janitor answering with something he's dreamed up. Uh, and while this may sound familiar, Coco, Coco, do you remember when the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan show? Yes, I do. Now, as uh, Julian talks about the Beatles being on the Ed Sullivan show, I could tell you that uh, the janitor spends 23 hours and 45 minutes alone each day. 
This is how he usually spends the other 15, telling the old night watchman a story about a ballroom at the top of the Eiffel Tower. And as the janitor talks, his features soften and his body becomes relaxed, and the expression of concern and tension on the night watchman's face slowly transforms into a look of interest and amusement. And in just a few minutes, neither of them is aware that just a few minutes ago, Coco could have had multiple drips of water on Coco's head, because now he's being removed from the world by something much nicer. And then Mr. Cameron says, here he is. And then the crowd goes wild. And now we begin to see our janitor as he really is, and not a moment too soon. Because there's a mystery the old night watchman is trying to uncover. And there's a chatter of all the stories told yet tonight, all of those things. I'm speaking over them, but you know they're lying there. Drifting in and out of your mind. It's been said uh, by philosophers that our entire universe might exist on the head of a pin. Like the flea that is too small to be seen singing in the palm of John Cameron's hand. To enjoy it, you have to believe in it. If only for a moment. When the janitor's telling it, Coco does. It's another example of symbiosis in nature. Much as even fleas need their snacky poos before they perform, and then they give us beautiful songs in return. The janitor provides the old man nightly with the products of his imagination, and the old man provides him with a kind of hope. Wait a second, a flea? Yeah, it it was just like like it was in my sock, and then I cupped it in my hands, and I held it, and then what happened? And then, uh, and then there was silence, because uh, when the janitor runs out of story, he also runs out of words. Oh, okay, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. Awkward. Awkward, and just now the janitor's face might illustrate the word paralyzed or pain or even pathetic in the encyclopedia. And then... You could almost picture the janitor's boss on the phone with his wife last night describing the janitor's social graces. Uh, the janitor walks around like somebody who's been hit over the head with an anvil in a cartoon. Like he doesn't know where he is. Like he's surprised every day. Whoa, what am I doing in the Eiffel Tower? It was a bush, bush, bush. Ababa says, give him this simple task, I say. Here, in your hand, is a map. You move it like this, to the left, to the right, but he can't do it. No, no, no. No, I know, I know, I know. Uh, But of course, he has a reason to be the way he is. Oh, Elizabeth, uh, I have to be quiet, you know. I know they will fire me. I know that. Uh, But you have to believe me. Please, my love, believe me. I know what I'm doing. I can't let him go. I just can't. I cannot let him go. I can't explain to you why. No, no, no. I can't. I'm not keeping a secret from you. Oh, no, no. Oh, Lisaveta. If you only knew the truth about the janitor, you would not believe me. No one would believe me. No, I cannot tell you. You're the only one I can talk to, but I cannot tell you because, uh, uh, besides, I could not explain. Because, uh, I know how you are. You talk to everyone. I love you, but you can't help it. You, uh, nobody knows, only me. I think maybe Coco suspects something, but, uh, you never know the truth. You know, he could never know. No, 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 I'm not going to... Okay, okay. Look, are you alone? Are you very alone? Okay, I'll give you a little itty bitty hint. Okay, but I have to talk quiet, so you're not going to get anything from this, okay? But the janitor, he never talks, except to tell the night watchman this long and bizarre story. Okay? No, 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 that's not the big clue. The big clue is, he began telling the night watchman the story 
when the night watchman asked the question, well, uh, oh, uh, hello, hello, oh, oh boy, we got cut off, I'll have to uh, call later. Narrator back, uh, everybody. We'll have a little bit more about that later, but for now, let us look for a moment at Coco. An elderly black expatriate of pre-civil rights America, he's outlived his wife, his friends, his family. He looks at the young man in front of him, who, having run out of story, simply stares at him. He can tell the young man would like him to go, and so he does. I guess it's time for me to go close the ticket booth. Okay, Coco. Good night, Julian. Good night. We hear the footsteps of Coco go off into the distance. But later that night, in the Eiffel Tower, when the janitor settles into his old cot up in the cold janitor's closet in which he lives, getting my pillow, I gotta puff my pillows and get my, I'm gonna get my blankets all set and my blankie poo. He comforts himself by remembering parts of the story he's told Coco in the past. He pictures the stagehands putting on their jackets after a long night's work. Pierre and Carpenter Lily listen and Jacques, who having got a taste of singing like he's a lion on the prowl, howling in the night. Uh, yes, I'm Jacques, I'm howling in the night. Oh, Jacques, sing it. Uh, <laughs> Jacques, man, uh, hey, you guys going home to bed? Oh, my poor little puppy. He's probably dancing around doing a little pee-pee dance. Yeah, I got to get home. Yeah, that's why I don't have a jaw, the dog. Uh, I'm uh, going out. I'll see you guys later. What do you mean you're going out? Uh, we, we, where are you going? I'm going out with my buddies. Wait a second. You have buddies? What buddies? Yeah, my kung fu buddies. Kung fu buddies? Wait, you do kung fu? My. Jacques, you got to take better care of yourself. Well, I'm going to bed. Pierre, going to bed. Yeah, I'm Lily. I'm going to bed, too. Look, I appreciate it from both of you, but if you don't live your life, what are you doing? Oh, Jacques. Anyway, you guys enjoy your rest. I'm getting out of here. Okay, then uh, you go. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, say hi to your puppy, okay? Oh, yeah, sure. And 45 minutes later, here are Jacques' kung fu buddies. Inside a house, Jacques knocks on the door. Uh, Hello, Auntie. Hello, he knocks quietly and he opens the door. Auntie, you want some tea? I'm going to make some. Helps me sleep, you know. Okay, Auntie, good night. And we hear him gingerly close the door. And as the night watchman Coco prepares her for a deep sleep in the heart of Paris alone in a drafty apartment in which he lives, he thinks of a moment from a story the janitor once told him, where the chief stagehand, Letitia, at the end of a long night was closing up the ballroom with the stagehand, Francois. Okay, I gotta put the little pop, little props in the small props box, uh, and the medium props in this medium prop box. Oh, this is so calming. Organizing props, Francois, is very calming. What'd you think about today's show? We did good. We did real good. We kept our cool. We didn't worry about anything, not this or that. Yeah. You know what? The show could not go on without us. I like that. I like that because uh, I'm not uh, I'm not so great in front of people, you know. Uh huh. But I like to secretly know that without you know what you do and what I do, and even Jacques, yeah, even Jacques, none of this uh, none of this would happen. Yeah. Do you know where this goes? Is this a medium prop or a small prop? It's a prop, like it's a propeller that goes, that's above the radiator, the props, prop, props. Okay, shelf oh, above here, right? Uh, yeah, no, no, I'll take it, Letitia, I'll take it. No, 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 I see the outline of a prop in the dust here. Yep, that's it, that's the prop spot for the prop, props, uh, yep. Okay, so that's everything, right? They'll know in the morning. Yeah, you know it's raining outside. Oh, it's raining. 
you know, I've got an umbrella. You know, if you want to, you know, I could walk you to the bus. You could walk me to the bus. Yeah, you could. Okay. Yeah, no, sounds good. Yeah, and as the janitor and the night watchman both lay in their beds, their thoughts of the orbiting human circus turned slowly into dreams. And the janitor remembers John Cameron saying, as he has so often, as millions of people prepare for sleep, broadcasting from the top of the Eiffel Tower, the orbiting human circus of the air. There's our goodbye music, and that's about all for this week, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. This is John Cameron, broadcasting from the top of the Eiffel Tower. The Orbiting Human Circus wishes you a good night. And the goodbye music plays, and it slowly fades out, and you know that tomorrow... You have two seasons of podcasts to listen to. You could get to know the Night Watchman a little bit better. The stagehands, Coco. Maybe you'll even discover you know what's what's going on and everything. Uh, maybe you'll listen a little bit closer. Good night. All right, everybody, I want to thank everybody who became a patron recently. I want to thank Leslie, Stephen, and Mike. Thanks, 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 and good night. Ginger, Ash, and Elizabeth. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Hashim, Lisa, and Anastasia. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Alice, Charlie, and Elizabeth. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Kirsten, Sarah, and Kylie. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Ann, Monica, and Kari. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Vivian, Emerson, and Shane. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Quiva, Candace, and Abigail. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Ben, Damon, and Ava. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Rebecca, BJ, and Brian. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sarah, Gavin, and Heather. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thanks, thanks, and good night, everybody. Uh, take care and uh, good night. Oh, whoops, I, always, I forgot all the other stuff I always say. Uh, you can always support Sleep With Me. Uh, Sleep With Me exists for free podcast because people to support the sponsors or support the show on Patreon. Uh, even if you sign up for a free so trial from one of our sponsors, it's a huge, huge help. Uh, you could also spread the word about podcasting in general. Believe it or not, that has a huge impact on the podcast indirectly, but it's huge. You could always refer people to Sleep With Me. You could use sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. Uh, and just let people know about the podcast. That's a big help. Uh, and I think that's it for now. Thanks. Uh, and uh, uh, good night, everybody. Uh, and here's uh, one more thing I want you to know about. Do you want me to do anything? Do you, I forgot. Did you like a cross breeze or not? Okay, no problem. I got it. Take, I'll take care of it. Uh, good night. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. If you've been having trouble meeting your goals or difficulty with relationships, trouble sleeping, or you're feeling stressed or depressed, BetterHelp is available. BetterHelp offers online professional counselors who can help and listen. And you simply fill out a questionnaire to assess your needs. BetterHelp will match you with your own professional licensed therapist. And you can start communicating with them in under 48 hours. And this isn't self-help or a crisis line. This is secure online professional counseling. BetterHelp's counselors have a broad range of expertise. So if it's not available locally, that's the amazing thing about BetterHelp. They can match you with a professional licensed counselor with an area of expertise you're looking for. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log in anytime. I keep hearing from listeners that sign up how much they love that they're able to send unlimited messages to their counselor. And then they get timely and thoughtful responses back. Plus, you can schedule your video or phone sessions, and everything you share is confidential. You don't have to worry about sitting in a waiting room. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so it's easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling. Financial aid is available. And in fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And therapy has been a huge part of my life with the right 
licensed therapist. It took me a while to find the right person, but I can look back at milestones in my life over the past eight years and these major turning points. And that counselor was there as I journeyed from one phase to the next. They were giving me the tools in the toolbox. They were listening to me when I just needed someone to talk to and to talk stuff out with. And, and it's changed my life. I'm so grateful for the professional relationship I have with my therapist. And this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And Sleep With Me listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. Now that's BetterHelp, B E T T E R. H E L P dot com slash sleep with me. And you can join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced better help professional. Thanks everybody. Oh, Hey everybody. Scoots. This is a, this is interesting after, after hours of the podcast here, I just want to let you know, we've got this referral program up and running. If you're ever looking for right now, we have this thing going for the piece, top three shares in January, February, and March, uh, we'll get a pair sleep phones with a sleep with me logo on it uh, if you refer people to sign up and list it that actually become subscribers of the podcast you can do that sleep with me podcast.com slash refer r-e-f-e-r i think is how you spell that uh, and if you like just we say no i just want a set of sleep phones you can get those at sleep with me podcast.com slash sleep phones now we have all like all three models of sleep phones all like different size headbands all with the sleep with me logo you can get those yeah over at uh, sleep with me podcast dot com slash sleep phones and use uh, sleep with me at checkout uh, and you'll get a little bit off your order uh, thanks and thanks and good night everybody thanks